Hey guys, welcome back to Queens of Grace Unveiled. For those of you who have never been to my channel, my name is Milka Rosena, and welcome to my Christ-based podcast, amen? And for those of you who have, I know what you're thinking, okay? It's my new little setup. It's a slight switch up. I'm actually in California right now, so by the grace of God, he has opened up doors for me to be here. So this is where I'm at right now. So that's why it's not my typical gray room, but amen, we here. So for today's episode, I'm super, super, super excited about this because I actually saw a post on Instagram a while back talking about um, signs, whether this person is from God or not, right? And I was like, hmm, this is actually such a deep topic because I know in my life, whether it be relationship or friendships, I wasn't really able to use discernment to be able to dictate whether this person was supposed to be in my life or not. So I was like, you know what? Let me pray and confide in the Lord about this and see if I should talk about this and I was able to get a bunch of notes together to teach you guys about this topic because oh it is so good so for today's episode it is called seven signs he or she is not from God okay almost seven signs seven red flags whatever the heck y'all want to call it but these are seven key signs whether this person is not from God amen <laughs> So the very first one I wanted to talk about is selfish ambitions, you guys. So this is somebody who genuinely prioritizes themselves, that doesn't care about what God has for them, that's always talking about me, 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 what I want to do, what I can do, I want to do this, I want to get that, like all the, the, you know, the fleshly desires that, that someone that, how do I explain this, that isn't really selfless, selfless someone that isn't, you know, sacrificial that doesn't really give out you know a hand to people somebody that really tries to see what they can get out of every single outcome and y'all already know i have scriptures to back this up amen <laughs> so the first scripture that i'm going to use today is philippians 2 verses 3 to 4 and i'm going to be reading the niv version so this says do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit conceit rather in humility value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests but each of you to the interests of each other amen so it's super important you guys to understand how someone is based off of whether they resemble christ or not right so we know how selfless christ was we know how much jesus did for us as he was here on earth so when you see somebody who's selfish and when you see somebody who doesn't care for others who wants to you know do things that only benefits them that's a red flag right like you have to understand the moment you see somebody that only cares about them you're like you should be like er, like what no, because we know how Jesus was. We know that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for us. He literally died for us. So when you see somebody that doesn't really do things for other people and genuinely finds it a burden to help others, that is a no, 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 no. Amen. I also have another scripture from Matthew 16, verse 24. It says, then Jesus said to his to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me, you guys. I feel like nobody really kind of sees the importance of this scripture sometimes because Jesus literally said, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself and pick up your cross. Now, what does that mean? Jesus tells us daily, whatever you think that you know that you want, if it has nothing to do with what Jesus has for you, you better deny it. And that's a hard pill to swallow for people sometimes because we naturally get caught up in the flesh, right? We naturally get caught up in the, oh, I want to do this. I want to attain this. I can get this. And God's like, well, even though those are good things, sometimes that's not what God has for you, right? So being able to pick up your cross and be like, okay, Lord, I want to do what you have for me. That's being selfless. That's that's you truly following the purpose of what God has for you, right? So keep an eye out for people like that. When you see people genuinely trying to do what God has for them, or when you see people genuinely trying to, you know, become another version of Christ here on earth, like that's a really good sign. But when you see somebody that only cares about me, 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 mm -mm. red flag. Amen. <laughs> So the second sign that I have for you guys is lack of spiritual fruit. Amen. And 
this one to me is so deep right because when i was you know writing everything down the holy spirit told me you cannot bear the fruit of something you're not a part of and that really hit me because i was like ooh, because there be times where we see somebody that has good attributes right but because they're not rooted in christ those attributes mean nothing right because at the end of the day if you don't do things out of the love of god with the intention and the knowing that you're trying to be jesus right a, well, a version of jesus here on earth your good deeds and your good fruits mean nothing right and i have a scripture from galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 that kind of helps explain the fruit that i'm talking about so this scripture says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things that as against such things there is no law so this kind of just goes to show the different attributes that jesus had and the types of fruits that he bared so if you're with somebody who's constantly angry who's genuinely negative who's you know like i said earlier selfish who cares about nothing but themselves who's just you know somebody who genuinely is the exact opposite of the way jesus carried himself that is a very 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 red flag amen <laughs> I also have another scripture from John 15 verses 4 to 5. It says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing, right? This scripture carries so much power because this is literally God telling us, if you think you could do life apart from me the fruit that you think you will bear is not only not going to last it has it's not beneficial period no matter how good it may feel right so this is what i mean there's so many good people here on earth who do good things out of the kindness of their heart but because their vine is in jesus because their root isn't the foundation of christ it's it literally it won't last and it, it doesn't mean as much as they think it does and that's something that's super important to pay attention to you guys because if you're with people or you're surrounding yourself with you know people who genuinely don't confide in the lord a lot of the things you guys will be doing even if it's not bad isn't bearing fruit like and it, uh, it's so hard because this is something that i struggled with in college like i would be around so many people that were good people right but because we weren't really doing anything that that god wanted or that god had for us the things we were doing were in vain it had no purpose it had no meaning even if it, they were not good things right but like i don't know it's just super important to kind of you know differentiate okay you know there's a difference between a good thing and a god thing right amen like please you guys that's a very big one <laughs> And the third scripture that I really wanted to add on to this is Matthew 7, verses 17 to 18. It says, Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree can never bear bad fruit, and a bad tree can never bear good fruit, you guys. Oof, this one is so, so, so important because a lot of the times people don't realize, like, just because somebody looks physically good or whatever, doesn't mean internally that's what they are because the bible even says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit so use discernment if you see somebody trying to present themselves as a good tree but the things that they say are bad that just goes to show they're not even a good tree they're a bad tree right so surround yourselves with people that genuinely bear good fruit surround yourselves with people that that genuinely pushes you and wants you to receive the fullness of what God has for you because if you're around people who drain you if you're around people who lead you into doing things that have no purpose if you're around people who genuinely try to bring you down when you when you want to do great things no that's a bad tree like God doesn't want that for us God doesn't want us to be around people like that I'm not saying like oh you know shun them out this and the third but like it's it's more so like use discernment and use wisdom of how you should orchestrate that because sometimes you know, God will want you to be the light in the group to help guide them. But even then, use discernment because at times, sometimes God is saying, it's time for you to leave that group. It's time for you to leave that person because they're not really pushing you to the great things that God has for you. And it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because, you know, this could be a best friend of 30 years. It could be a boyfriend of 10 years. It doesn't matter who it is to you, but it's like use discernment and use wisdom because the more you read the Bible and the more you 
genuinely pay attention to the things that God has for us, you're going to realize like, wait a minute, like, why am I, you know, hanging around this person knowing that this, 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 this is what God has for me? Why am I dating this person when this is what God has for me? It's like you start to take the word and use it in your own life, which helps you orchestrate how you should live life. And that's the only way you should live life. Like, I pray that you guys genuinely go over these scriptures, read it for yourselves. Honestly, you can read it in different versions as as well. I'm really just reading it in the easiest version because I want it to be as simple and plain as possible because literally the Bible is crystal clear, you guys. There's so many things that God has spoken about when it comes to whether people are supposed to be in your life or not. And sometimes we still struggle like, dang, I don't know if God wants this person in my life or not. Okay, well, does this person bear good fruit? Is this person selfish? Like, you know, genuinely pay attention to these things. Amen. (laughs) So the third sign that I have for you guys is if this person wants to commit sin with you, right? So whatever that may be, whether it be in friendships, relationships, any type of sin that this person genuinely wants to kind of guide you and lead you to do is a red flag. Like, come on. (laughs) Now, this point is honestly very plain and simple. Amen. Like, naturally as human beings we're gonna fall short we're gonna fall into temptations at times but if this person is genuinely pushing you genuinely trying to you know get you to do something instead of trying to pull you away from it that is a red flag within itself amen and that's and it's funny because there be times where like i'm gonna speak on myself okay there be times where i be trying to make up excuses for people when they try to kind of guide me to sin i'm like well no they just you know, they just don't know any better. Maybe just, you know, they don't, they didn't mean it like that. Like, it's not that bad, like whatever, right? Making things up in my head to make myself feel better. But nonetheless, that's still not of God. Like that's literally the act of the enemy. And it's like, not to say that person's demon possessed or whatever the case is, but that just goes to show that person has a lot of work that needs to be done in them. And that's not your job. That's God's job, right? You can't, you know, you can't play God for them. That's something that God's going to have to do within them on their own time but if this person is genuinely trying to get you to commit sin girl uh -uh. like no we don't do that over here (laughs) like what (laughs) but the scripture that i wanted to um used today was james 4 verse 17 and it says if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it it is sin for them right so this is oof this is so deep because 99% of the time, we know exactly what we should do and shouldn't do, but we still do it. And that goes to show the sin that's, that's creeping up on us, right? So if you know, and you know better then try to do better, right? Because at the end of the day, like I said, we're going to fall short all the time. But if you're surrounding yourselves with people who know we're going to fall short and try to get you to fall short, it's like, it's, it's a setup, (laughs) So the second scripture that I have is James 1 verses 14 to 15. And it says, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. It gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death. This is such a deep scripture for me because I feel like at first I really didn't see how big sin was if that made sense because i paid no mind to it right so whenever i do something that i knew i shouldn't do i'm like it's fine you know like jesus died for my sin so like i'm fine right but like i never really tried to like dig deeper into what that meant right and the reason jesus had to die for our sins is because a lot of the not even a lot all the sin that we commit plants seeds of death in your life right so it's just every time you sin it's it's like a an it's like a door opening up for the enemy to come in to plant death in your life, right? So that's why it's so important to be mindful of who you're around because every time you let somebody come into your life and open up that door for you to sin, they're actually allowing the devil to come in and plant a seed of death in your life. And nobody wants that, right? You want to be around people who bring life, not death. So pay attention. Like it, It's way more deeper than sometimes we we think. And it's super important because it's like, guys, like, mm-mm like we can avoid so many harmful things that happen to us simply by surrounding yourselves by the right um by by the right types of people amen and with this specific point of you know someone wanting to commit sin with you something that god genuinely emphasized 
is the importance of coming back to him when I'm in that place, right? So if I'm ever with people or someone or whatever that's trying to get me to do something that I know is displeasing to God, he's like, come to me, right? Don't run. Come to me. Let me know. Because I feel like a lot of the times when when we're about to do something or if we did something that we know makes God upset with us, right? We run away from him. And he told me, he's like, Milka, if you run away from me, like, what will that do for you, right? Because at the end of the day, he's our father, right? So he wants us to come to him and to cry out to him and ask for help. Because the moment I like shy away and pretend it's not a big deal and try to justify the sin, like, oh, it doesn't even matter because whatever, like, that's, that's where the wall is starting to be built and it's not god building it it's me building it right so god literally tells us come to me literally come to me when you're falling short come to me if you can't help being around this person that wants to get you to do this or whatever the case is like literally come to god cry at his feet and he will slowly purify you he will teach you because i remember for me there has been multiple times where i like it's weird like before i fell short i knew i'd fall short i'm like oh i know i'm about to fall short today like oh whatever like i wouldn't make it a big deal but then the more i started coming back to god and like talking about it with him i would genuinely like my heart posture would change i would genuinely not desire it anymore like it it was so weird like my heart started to be like you know what god like i don't even want to do it anymore it doesn't satisfy me it doesn't please me in no shape or form like i don't even want to you know make you upset because of how patient and because of how kind you've been to me and then because of that new heart posture it made it easier for me to kind of distance myself from people it's like the most beautiful thing because god is so patient with us god is so so patient with us and he will work out like work on your pace because all he truly cares about is us understanding that we cannot get through this life without him amen And the last scripture that I wanted to mention for this point is Mark 7 verses 20 to 23. Amen. And this is a really, really good one. So I'm going to have all the scriptures up on board as I'm reading them so you guys can read them with me. It says, what comes out of a person defiles them, for it is from within a person's heart that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, (laughs) deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside a defiled person. Amen. And this is so important. I love how he emphasizes the importance of the inside of the person right because like i mentioned earlier a person who's deceitful a person who's you know trying to get you to do things that you're not supposed to do or a person who genuinely doesn't care about what god has doesn't really show it on their physical right it's more so their inner man that carries the attributes of somebody who's gonna lead you astray from god right and even the devil the devil's not gonna come looking like a scary monster right he's gonna come as the most appealing beautiful thing to you because that's what attracts us to him then once we're attracted to it they guide you off the off the path so that's something i feel like it's super important for us to understand because half the time when we're doing things that we know we're not supposed to do it's not from somebody who looks like the devil right it's gonna be somebody who looks like the most charming thing in the room or the most best like who has the most you know the best characteristics as a bestie or whatever the case is right it's coming from the most deceitful thing so genuinely pay attention to the inner man of a person pay attention to the things that this person is saying so the things this person you know kind of just allows them to be a part of because it's what dwells inside of them that's going to lead you astray amen so the fourth point that i have is someone who lacks respect for god's word all right this is somebody who can quote every bible scripture right but does not act on it somebody that goes to church every sunday but out the outside on saturday like okay (laughs) people need to remember that the bible is not just a book full of stories and you know miracles and wonders no it's literally an instruction book you guys it's a manual to life it's a way of living so if you're with somebody who doesn't really respect the word of god but but even goes as far as knowing the word of God, that is such a scary thing, you guys, because being around somebody who who knows Jesus, who knows the things that Jesus has done, who knows the characteristics of Jesus, but genuinely chooses to deny him, 
that is very scary you guys because the bible even talks about it's better to not know him than to know him and deny him because what do you mean you know jesus and you don't care <laughs> because there's a difference there's a difference between not knowing jesus and knowing jesus and choosing not to knowing him it's like what like that is so 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 scary you guys in James 1 verse 22, it says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Like, <laughs> it's funny because the Bible literally tells us what to do. And it's really funny because the Bible even talks about how nothing under the sun is new. Okay. Meaning that everything that we're going through, everything that you're going through, everything that I'm going through, somebody already went through it. And not even 99 a hundred percent of the time what you're going through god already has written something to help you get through it so if you're reading the bible and you receive your answer of how to help yourself with with this situation and you're choosing not to take the answer it's like bro this what are you doing like this bible is not here for decoration it's really a way of living and that's something i feel like all of us need to kind of like grow up and start to understand that if you have a bible in your house just know you got the answer guide to every single test in life in your room but you're choosing not to use it like what so please you guys genuinely take the word of god serious understand that the word of god is literal bullets to every single bad situation in life and it's also keys to every single good door god has for you like take it seriously like a lot of us take the bible for granted so many of us have access to it but don't understand the importance of it like please 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 understand that you have to respect the word of god you have to operate in what god has for you amen <laughs> The fifth point, he or she is not from God, is if you are confused, you guys. I cannot emphasize this enough. God is a God of clarity. He's a God of guidance, not a God of confusion. Amen? So the scripture that I have to help you guys with this one is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. It says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Like, please, you guys. God is genuinely a God of peace. So if you're somebody who doesn't feel peace, if you're somebody who's, you know, genuinely so stressed out, so anxious and nervous about this person or whether this person should be in your life, just know that within itself is a sign. Like a lot of the times, many of us want this big grand sign. We're like, Lord, let me know, is this person supposed to be my life? And we're waiting for God to come down himself and give us the answer. But he's literally telling you, the answer is the fact that you're not at peace. The answer is that you're confused. If you know the characteristics of God and you feel the opposite, that's your answer, period. <laughs> and the sixth point that I have for you guys is resistance to accountability, you guys. And this is something I'm not going to lie. I struggled with a little bit. I used to get a little offended and a little mad when somebody would try to tell me something that I did. I'm like, er, like, why are you sitting here trying to tell me something like i would get irritated but the lord did his work in me amen and now i understand that when somebody is coming up to me trying to give me guidance it's because they want me to do better not because they're trying to show me where i'm wrong at and that's something a lot of us need to understand if somebody's trying to come to you and give you counsel and if somebody's trying to give you guidance it's because they want better for you not to sit down and right your wrongs amen so if you're with somebody who genuinely avoids healthy correction dismisses the need for mentors or any type of spiritual guidance that's a really really big red flag because it's like what do you mean you won't take guidance <laughs> like what do you mean you don't want to hear the counsel of somebody who who feels like they can give you something or help you in something like why why are you rejecting guidance that's weird because at the end of the day if you have that oh i know it all mentality you're gonna really really struggle out here for real <laughs> The Bible scripture that I wanted to use is Proverbs 27, verse 17. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Literally, when you surround yourself with people who genuinely give you good counsel and try to pour wisdom into you, it's iron sharpening iron. You guys are both increasing each other. But if somebody's trying to help you and you keep denying it, it's like, bro, how are we going to sharpen each other? Like, please, like, let's let's be serious. <laughs> And it's crazy because even in Proverbs 12, I love this scripture. It says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Okay, this is what the version says. It's the NIV version, okay? So don't come at me. But no, seriously, guys, somebody who genuinely hates correction, 
will not grow it's super super hard for somebody to excel in life if you do not like correction like ah, this is a big one and it was hard for me too because i used to feel attacked when people would correct me but now i'm like please the more the merrier let me know where i'm doing wrong because i want to do good in life and sometimes it's through that one conversation that god wants you to have that can help unlock the next door for you so i take please i take counsel so seriously now amen <laughs> and the last point the last red flag that i have for you guys is somebody who disregards family values like ugh, this is a very very hard one um for a lot of people but it's a very important one you guys the bible talks about the importance of honoring your father and mother so much but nowadays i feel like this generation thinks it's an option right they think it's it's debatable right and it's and it's hard because when you really think about it you know some people aren't in situations where they're in the best place with their parents or they don't have the best relationship with their parents whether it be because you know they, their parents were absent or they just were abusive or whatever the case is but the hard thing to understand is that god already knew that would happen before it even happened so understanding that the parents that god has assigned for you is you know predestined he allowed it to happen not to destroy you or whatever but it's because that's what god saw fit so trying to it's hard but you know at, for some people who are going through you know hard times with their parents try to understand that okay lord you have given me these parents for a reason you have assigned these people to be my covering so as hard as it may be i have to honor them as hard as it may be i have to respect them right not that doesn't mean you have to agree with every single thing they're saying but you know being able to just respect them right is the right thing to do you guys and i know it's hard because i've i've seen and i've like you know heard multiple things about like people's relationship with their parents and i'm like okay you know it's hard to say but you know every time i'm like that's god knows like he knows he not only does he know he allowed it to be that way and it's hard to try to like make sense of us um at times but it's like it's something that we really really just got to do amen and i have two scriptures to help you guys out with that the first one is colossians 3 verse 20 it says children obey your parents and everything for this pleases the lord god genuinely 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 finds joy when we um when we um obey our parents right because at the end of the day although you know they how do i explain this like although we're all borrowed if that makes sense like we all belong to god and like even your parents now aren't your real parents they're your covering that god has set for you that's kind of how i think of it right like it's still super important to you know respect them and to be obedient to them and to understand them to whatever extent you know you can because that is what god wants amen and the last scripture that i have for you guys today is ephesians 6 verse 1 to 3 it says children obey your parents and the lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth and this scripture is super 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 deep you guys it even loki tells you guys if you want to live a long good life you really should obey your parents because people don't realize if you want to rebel and go against your parents you will be walking around cursed on earth and that is just the way god has saw it fit to do so it's super important to be able to make sure that you're living the life god has for you and part of living the life that god has for you is being obedient to your parents because they are your covering and it's like you know you don't want to be walking around here cursed because you had that argument with your, with your mom and you told her you'll never speak to her again it's like no guys please as hard as it may be and as tough as it may sound do everything you can to be on you know the good side with your parents be respectful you know genuinely just just you know just take it up to god if it's hard obviously but know that part of the answer what god is going to tell you is to just be respectful and to keep a healthy relationship with your parents you guys amen i hope this video blessed you guys this was such a fun topic for me because i genuinely love talking about like you know things that i was once blinded to so let me know if there's any other types of like red flags or like do's and don'ts that you guys want me to do but other than that i thank god for you guys i hope you guys have a blessed rest of your 
April. It's the beginning of April. So I pray that you guys have a blessed April. And I'll see you guys in a week. Because I'm trying to do this a week now. Every week. Amen. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Bye, guys.